Hi everyone and welcome back to Stitchy Bee. I'm Cheryl Temple. Okay, this week we're talking about how to store your fabric stash. So let's have a look at mine and here it is. So I've got one of these IKEA cupboards. Um, you can't quite see the lower half, but the lower half is exactly the same as the top. So it's one of the IKEA ones. I can't remember the name. So this is mine and it's not always this tidy don't worry um, but I've tidied it up just for you so how I like to store my fabric is in little mini bolts so there's nothing shoppy about this it's you can do this at home so this is just my own personal fabric stash that I have used for making cushions and homewares as well as dressmaking so I tend to have quite a lot um, because of all those different types of sewing so how it works is Um, each fabric is folded round a piece of card like this, which is a standard A4 card. I think this is something like 300 grams because they're, they're a different weights, aren't there? And this, which was the first way I discovered, um, this is a little bit thicker. This is called um, a comic board something like that and it's what um people who sell comics use to slot into their little sleeves to keep the comics stiff and upright in their shops or sending them out in the post so that's why some of my fabric bolts are all the different sizes because i used to use these and now i use the a4 size or in the us it would be letter size standard whatever suits you and you could cut up bits of cardboard um, you could use your amazon boxes and we always have loads of those here um, so whatever you've got lying around or you can buy these I buy these from Amazon um, and if you bought fabric from me you'll know that every bit of fabric I send out is wrapped around one of these so that you can slot it straight into your stash and it keeps nice and neat okay so that's how I do mine um, do you want a quick peek while you're here so I've got all sorts of different things I've got some satins in there that I used to make shower caps with a gorgeous pink one um, I've got oh sometimes before I started buying fabric I'd buy things like duvet covers um, and I've kept this because I've yet to convert this into something but they these would make a great pair of shorts so um, I used to buy the king size duvet covers because there you get more fabric they're huge and also some of them come with a contrasting backing which I think would work nice in a kind of pocket or um, a little contrast hem or a cuff so yeah so I keep things like that in here as well um, actually another this was a duvet cover as well um, and I've used this to make my dog a, a bed a little cushion for his bed so you can do all sorts of things like that so yeah that's how I store mine and um, it's pretty simple and I've not got much space in here because you can see I'm in the loft so this is the tallest part of the loft so I've put the biggest cabinet in here that I could find and yeah I really like it because sometimes when I'm not sure what I'm gonna make I'll just open this and think oh yeah I forgot about that one um, and it's a really nice way to store it and also if you've got shelves that are open or you've got those um, cubes that you can get from places like Ikea I think the Kallax cubes you can slot fabric into those as well and it keeps it nice and neat and um, they do you do tend to need a full shelf I'm sure you won't struggle with that um, like me you kind of squeeze them all in um, so yeah if you haven't got a full shelf what you can do is turn some of these on their sides and kind of use them like a little bookend to store the fabric that way up so um, we'll go over to the table now and I'll show you how I fold this so that it's nice and neat and that there's no raw edges at the side and it, it just keeps it nice and intact so that you can pull it out have a look at it and slot it back in nicely so let's go over to the table and I'll show you how I fold mine so here we are with our fabric now most people tend to wash their fabric first before they store it or I don't I tend to store it before I wash it um, but if you've however you've got it lay it out 
with the self edges at the side and fold those together, wrong sides together so that you can see your lovely fabric on the outside. So all I'm doing here is just folding it in half lengthways. Oh, I think that's widthways, but you know what I mean. There we go. And then lay it out on the table so that it's nice and neat. Pop your card into the center of the left hand side. I put the self edges on top just because I'm pedantic and I like to tuck away the raw edges. And then fold that over like that and fold the folded edge over to completely match the size of the card and then fold the fabric until it's all gone. And when you get to the end, I tend to fold that over and tuck it inside and that stops it unravelling. If you wanted to, you've got to be careful though, you can pop a pin in there and, and then it won't unravel at all but obviously you run the risk of popping holes into your fabric. Um, but I have done that with some of the satins that I've got um, but yeah just be super careful if you do that. And there you go, that's the mini bolt. Now if you wanted to store your fabric, if you've got lots of fabric um, like I have here for the shop, um, you can store it this way yourself at home. So it's, I just use these, um, I think these are Billy bookcases from Ikea and they're, they're brilliant, they're just the perfect width. So if you think about your average size or the biggest width of fabric is 150 centimetres, then you just need to remember that when you go shopping for things like this. Um, but obviously that's halved, so I'll show you what I mean. So how I store fabric in quantity is by using these little bulk cards. Now you can't get these that easily. I had these made and obviously you get lots of the waste products when you've bought lots of fabric and you end up with the roll ends and then you can reuse them. But to get me started, I, I had these made to a specific size. So they're 75 centimeters long um, and they just fit nicely onto one of these billy shelves. So if you wanted to do this at home, if you've got lots of fabric for maybe curtain making and things like that, it's, it's a good idea to keep it neater. So what you do is, like the other little mini bolt that I made, um, you fold the fabric in half, and you use one of these bolt cards and you wrap it round that way and it keeps it beautifully neat and it's easier to cut as well so um, I don't know if you've ever dealt with full rolls of fabric or um, bought from a shop in that way they're a little bit cumbersome to deal with so storing fabric in this width is a lot more manageable if you've got lots of a certain type there you go. We'll keep going. And then you can tuck it in again, like on the mini one. And you've got a nice little cute fabric bolt there. And that's all nice and tucked away. So that's it, a little mini one from me this week. Uh, next week, I'm going to be talking about PDF patterns and where you can print them out. So there are a couple of companies that I've found where you can have your PDF patterns printed on a large sheet of AO or A1 paper and I've not tried them yet so I thought it'd be a good idea for me to test a couple. I think there's two or three I know of and if you know any let me know. Um, it'll be UK based this time um, only because I'm likely to get them back in the next week um, but there will be some in the US as well so let me know or let everyone else know where you buy yours but I usually print out my PDFs on A4 paper and then stick them together either with a, a glue stick or sellotape uh, using the sellotape way you end up with no fingerprint left if you've ever done that um, so I think it's time that I did them properly and I've got a few to um, have printed out because I'm making progress with my Make 9 uh, 2018 list. 
So I'm going to get those done ready and then I think the following week um, I'll talk about my make nine list and which ones I've sewn already and which ones I've yet to sew. There's all different brands in there so I'm looking forward to trying some of the new pattern companies as well. So I hope that's been helpful this week. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.